Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Stefan and this is another episode in my Kabalevsky Opus 39 mini course. In today's video, we're going to look at number five. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so and make sure to check the notifications bell to never miss a new video. Also, I now offer online piano lessons. If you're looking for one, there's going to be information in the description below. So a couple of words about the book. I always have to mention this if you don't know anything about it. Kabalevsky's Opus 39 is an amazing book, um, a collection of little studies, character pieces for beginners from prep all the way to grade one, grade two level to develop musicality, expression and technique. So in this video, let's try to learn number five. And number five, as you can see, is very, very staccato. It has many names. I think it's called the juggler or little play game, something like that, but it's number five. And as you can see, the time signature is three, four. So we have three beats and we only have crotchets or quarter notes all the way through a lot of rests and we finish on a dotted minimum or a dotted half note in the very last line. The key signature is two flats. So we are in the key of B flat major and we have a B flat and an E flat. So every B and every E is going to become flat. Now, obviously it's ideal to play the B flat major scale before you start this piece, just to get into the fingering and the geography of B flat major, because we have two black notes, but we're not going to do that right now. And what you can see is in the first line or first phrase, the right hand starts with two quarter notes, the left hand finishes the third one. And then in the second phrase from bars five to eight, is the opposite. The left hand plays two quarter notes or two crotchets and the right hand plays the third one. And then they change again and this rhythmic pattern keeps changing all the way through the piece to make sure that your counting and concentration stays uh, all the way until the end. First, it's ideal to practice this with uh, legato or not even legato, but just without stressing too much about the staccatos and once you know where the hand needs to go and what the notes are you can start putting in your staccatos. It's very very jumpy and there's a lot of hand position movement change so the finger numbers will shift all the way through so in order to play it really well you kind of have to memorize it unless your sight reading is really really good but for a beginner i think this is quite difficult to sight read now most of the melodies made up of skips and steps so seconds and thirds which makes it easier to read but it is still very kind of all around the place it's fragmented by lots of rests which makes it harder to read the notes in a continuous way now let me demonstrate it very quickly and then we're going to learn the right hand left hand and look at the articulation So it is like a juggling little piece between the two hands, almost like throwing balls and catching them. Now let's see it first without any staccatos. So right hand starts in D and B flat position, two and four, and left hand on the F in the treble clef. So right hand goes one, two, three, one, two, three. Then moving down to four on the B flat, one, two, three, one, two, three. And now the left hand takes on the first two beats. One, two, three. One, two, three. Shifting up four onto the F. One, two, three. 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 One, two. Shifting up. Shifting down to the G number four, E flat, three, one, and tenuto. The finger numbers might be slightly different in editions, in different editions, but make sure to follow the one that you have because having a solid fingering in this piece is really going to help. Now, when you start playing something with lots of rests and lots of 
position changes, something like this could happen. Where you play the notes which you see after each other quickly, but then you stop when the other hand takes over or when there is a position change. Now it's really important to slow it down to the pace where you can play it very evenly counting one, two, three, even if it's this slow. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and so on. So keeping it really even is a key thing, otherwise it's not gonna go fast, and the faster you go with the little hesitation, the worse it's going to sound. Now, once you manage to learn the song with detached notes at an even pulse, whether it's fast or slow, you have to start adding in your staccatos. Now be careful, every single note has to be staccato or bouncy. And here, sometimes what can happen is that the notes adjacent to each other, you're going to connect them like this. But all of them have to be separated, so And here you can use a little bit of arm movement into the staccatos to make them bouncier, so not just finger staccato. Now when you practice it slowly, really slow what just I did, the sharper and the more pronounced your staccato is, the better it's going to be when it goes faster. Again, very careful to keep all the staccatos separated and nice and bouncy. And when it goes much better, then all you have to do is every time you practice, try a little bit faster. If faster speeds give you more mistakes and you start losing your staccatos or it becomes very uneven, go back to a slower pace and then work your way up again. And ideally it should go nice and fast. And uh, the faster you can do it, the better, really. So that's all about this little piece. There's not too much going on. It's the same thing from beginning to end, but it's trying to reinforce this uh, clean articulation, this staccato in three, four time with lots of rests kind of injected in between the notes. And the dynamics is the same. It's just loud all the way through.